Welcome to Food, Wine, and Whiskey, a podcast about having fun conversations on tasty dishes, vinos, and spirits from around the world. Rob is your host. He is an avid home chef, WSET Level 2 award in wine, and a whiskey drinker and collector. Time to set the table. Here's Rob. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for stopping in. And a big thank you to everybody who listens to the show for returning listeners. Thank you for so much for coming back in and listening to another episode. And if it's your first time finding the podcast, thank you for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation and come back for more conversations on food, wine, and whiskey. My guest today, I have a great guest today. He uh, does what I enjoy doing, which is a backyard chef. Uh, loves cooking outdoors. Mr. Matthew Hussey is my guest today. Matthew, how you doing? Hey, Rob, I'm doing well. I hope you are. I'm doing really well. Hey, I, I'm, I'm excited about our conversation today. I've been watching you for a while, and you've been gracious enough, nice enough to uh, engage with me with some conversation and ultimately a, a phone call. And, and uh, you know, I wanted to have you on the podcast because you you do backyard cooking videos specifically on the flat top is kind of where you live right now. Uh, your YouTube channel is The Hungry Hussy. And man, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. You got 238,000 subs last time I checked. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is a, a type of cooking that I think over the last decade has just taken off. I mean, it's just become a, a huge kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a method or what you want to call it, but a, a huge liking for cooking this way. And, and you do a great job. Tell us about your channel, how you started it, why you started it. Because I'm assuming you were a backyard cook, you know, like all us dudes. We like to cook in the backyard and you cooked on the flat top. And all of a sudden you said, Hey, I'm going to start filming myself cooking these videos. How'd that come about? Right. right. Yeah. So, um, man, it's, it's crazy how, when you start laying it out, just how things just kind of evolve, you know? And, uh, so back, uh, just got a memory about it. Not too long ago when I got my first, uh, big green egg, I lust, lusted after a big green egg for a long time. Right. Uh, got one and, uh, this was about 13, probably about 13 years ago. And, you know, I cooked on that thing religiously all the time. Now I had a lot more time on my hands at that point. Didn't have any kids, um, joined the, the big green egg forum, uh, this online got to know a lot of really good people. And I mean, we were, I was cooking, I mean, I was probably cooking on that thing three to three to five times a, a week. Right. Um, and, and my, my, I had a background in photography. I love photography, love, uh, everything about it. Uh, not so much video at that time. And, you know, I got to posting on Twitter, got to post it on Instagram, got to post it on Facebook, these pictures that I was taking of my food that I was cooking you know, in the house on the bigger, mostly on the big green egg, but there's, is in the house too. I, I like cooking. I like cooking in general, cooking outside, of course, makes it better. Um, and you know, out of the blue, you know, some marketing agency, you know, got a hold of me and said, Hey, we'd love to, uh, they they were a marketing, they were a marketing agency that worked with Blackstone Griddles and, and, uh, they said, Hey, we'd love for you to be an affiliate with us. Um, uh, if you're interested, you know, here's a, here's an affiliate link, you know, if we buy something. Uh, somebody buys something from that, you know, you get a little cut and I'm like, Oh man, that sounds pretty cool. So, um, I was like, yeah, sign me up. And, and at, there at the end of, you know, what we were doing, what we were setting up, they, they said, um, uh, there was only like just a couple people out there doing griddle videos, uh, or Blackstone videos uh, on YouTube at the time. One of which was Todd Tobin. Uh, and so he was kind of like the original, you know, griddle guy on uh or a blackstone guy on on youtube they were like check out check out this guy his name's todd Tovin. he he does a lot of stuff on youtube and um you know consider making some videos and uh, they didn't say you need to but so i got to looking and i was like gosh this i could do this i could do this and uh i have this equipment you know and got into it and uh, golly uh, let me go one step back i thought that i wanted to be a blogger rob that was a terrible, terrible advice that I gave myself. Okay. Come to find out, I didn't really care much about 
writing or typing or, you know, I can do it. I do well whenever I put my mind to it and I got the time, but I much rather just sit here and talk about it and tell you my process of how I did this, how I did that. And, um, I think, I think my blog, it's still out there, but I changed the name. It was like the chef next door. Like how stupid was that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so ran, so run of the mill. It's like, oh, the chef, everybody, there's, there's 20,000 of those, you know? And, uh, I remember, I remember, uh, my wife and I, we were just sitting there just kind of him hawing around and, and I was like, I've got the name for my, for my blog. Um, and I call it the hungry hussy and I'm, you know, a lot of people, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they hussy seems like a, a, a weird name or, uh, you know, but it's, it's kind of popular, uh, especially, uh, Europe in Europe, you know, UK, but, uh, I was like the hungry hussy. It's kind of a play on words, you know, hussy kind of like a, uh, something to be like, you know, when somebody's seeing that, they're like, hussy, that sounds kind of interesting the hungry hussy. Uh, so I get, get a lot of, uh, a lot of eyebrows up on that. And so, um, once going back that's whenever you know the name was born at that time uh still not so much video yet and got to dabbling in video and um let me take another step back on the big green egg form these guys were were cooking on these griddles and once i saw this guy make he was making grilled cheese he had like he had like 10 or 12 of the suckers on that blackstone you know and guy was just he was just cooking up everything on this griddle. And I was like, dang, I have got to get one of these things. Uh, cheese steaks, hamburgers. He's like, Oh man, these smash burgers, you got to have these smash burgers. And I was like, yeah, I do. So, so at you this know, point, I, you, I, did, you didn't have a griddle at this point. I didn't, I didn't. This was, okay. uh, I got my griddle in 2015, um, August, uh, end of August of 2015. And, uh, it's coming up on almost as 10 years be, uh, uh, just coming up here. And so, yeah, at that time I only had a, uh, big green egg and, um, uh, I had, I'd bought like this cast iron griddle thing to go on it for some stuff. But at that point, no, I hadn't. So I had a blog, um, I had a blog, finally had my name, you know, I'm posting pictures. Um, you know, this guy on the big green egg forum said, Hey, I like these black stones. Next thing you know, that's whenever the market of gauge is see reached out to me and that's whenever that's how it all became uh kind of real at that point and yeah the hunger hussy cooking on blackstone started happening and now, when, uh, when did you launch the youtube channel when did that finally uh that was the following year in 2016 is whenever okay. i think uh around june june 2016 is whenever i uh launched the the hunger hussy youtube channel um, it looks a little bit, I mean, I just used basically my old login. So it looks like I've been on YouTube longer, but, uh, officially cooking on, on the griddle and that stuff was about June, 2016. And, uh, yeah, um, it's been, it's been a ride ever since. I'll tell you that a lot of work. Well, I, I love your channel because one, uh, you know, you, you learn a lot about cooking on, on a griddle in the black. Yeah. So we're going to get into some of those things. What I mean by that in just a few minutes. But two, you know, to me, Matt, anytime you watch a YouTube channel, whether it be about cooking or, you know, uh, fixing a, a, a plumbing issue in your house, uh, you know, it's nice to, to gather information and learn while you watch. But it's also a whole lot of fun to be entertained <laughs> while you're watching. And, you know, watching your channel, watching you cook, I mean, you get engaged or you, you at least get the viewers engaged with you. Uh, to have a good time while we're watching you cook us some some fun dishes on on the grill. Well, I appreciate that, and I try try my best because sometimes it's it's tough, as you know. You're you're a cook too, and uh, you know sometimes you just get wrapped up in the moment. And God, I tell you, the stuff goes so fast on that. You know, whenever you know things cook so fast, and you got to be on your game, and then you got to try to insert some kind of you know some kind of stupid comment or do something, <laughs> you know, to try to you know, insert some comedy in the thing. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, sometimes you do good and sometimes you, 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 you know, it's just like with anything you own it sometimes, sometimes you're not, but, uh, well, yeah. I, I'll say it this way too. I like that you keep it real. You're authentic because, you know, if you make a little hiccup here or there, 
uh, yeah. you know, you just roll with it. You, you leave it in there. You're not trying to edit it out and go, you know, I'm, I'm the perfect cook every time you keep it real. We all can yeah. watch you and go, Hey man, I'm going to have a hiccup too. Hussy has a hiccup. I'm going to have it. Yeah. Hiccup. Yeah. And that's, that's part, I, you know, I try to resonate with, uh, with, with just a, you know, the standard guy, you know, and that's all I am. I ain't, ain't nothing. I ain't nothing special. And, uh, you know, I want to try to resonate with that, that guy who's, uh, you know, he's just trying to cook for his family, cook for his friends, you know, maybe flex a little bit, but, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you just, you know, you're just trying to try to do the best you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I do want to mention, uh, you know, we mentioned, uh, the, the marketing agency that reached out to you and kind of nudged you along to start kind of doing a little more and ultimately getting to YouTube. But, uh, you are now, do we call it a partner? with uh blackstone i mean you're on their channel as well where you're yeah. you're putting out some videos on cooking on their their griddles yeah i think i think uh, i think they call it a consultant okay um, kind of so yeah i uh i'm uh contract or whatever for, with them to uh uh i make a video per week for them and my my right now um as i speak my my show airs on their channel on saturdays um uh, time time kind of uh, just depends but that right now it's on saturdays yeah yeah very cool well you ready to dive yeah. into some some uh some talk on the flat top specifically and uh Shoot we'll you. talk cooking we'll talk maintenance we'll talk equipment kind of let people know if, if they don't have a flat top but they've seen your videos yeah. or others and they're interested in getting one i think a lot of people can be intimidated by this for a couple of reasons one it's the first question I'll have for you is the seasoning part. I've had friends who said they bought one and four months later, they, they threw it away because it just got all rusty and uh, they just couldn't maintain, keep it up to be able to cook on it. Now I'm here in Houston, you know, we, we were close to the ocean, to the Gulf, and I know you are on the East coast as well. And you got humidity and things like that, but seasoning a, a griddle properly, once you, you do it the right way, I think, you know, it, it's pretty durable. It holds up in, in most environments. I agree. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they do have problems with it and, you know, you're trying to take time at the beginning to really, you know, make sure you get a good, good season, get it nice and season, um, is, is very important. Um, and you know, my seasoning process, you know, everybody, it's just like with, every, you know, it's like we were talking about podcasts. Everybody kind of has their own little way of doing things. And I like, you know, I, I go very light, you know, seasoning coats. I like things to cool down before coat in between coats, but yeah, as long as you season it well to begin with, I got videos out there doing it. Um, season it well, if you clean it right after you use it and then oil it right after you use it to store it away, you know, I, I don't think you're going to have many problems. I mean, we, it gets hot here. It gets humid. It, Lord knows it's humid. It's like an armpit, you know. <laughs> um, but but yeah, you it, it'll you know it'll it it it'll definitely last you a long time. Now, um, I'm not saying that uh, you won't have up under it rust, you know that kind of thing. I don't really worry about too much about that. Some people, some people do. I just feel like all that heat and stuff. You're just it's just going to mess with the paint and that kind of stuff. So, but the top, you know clean it real well, oil it real well afterwards, you know, to make sure it's dry because man, once, once rust starts, rust, rust does not sleep. That's for sure. Yeah. I'll tell you one of the, one of the tips I learned from, from watching your, your videos and, and I've been cooking on a flat top for a decade. I love the things, uh, but I never did this until recently. I'd say about a year ago when I saw you talking about this is having that water bottle. When you talk about cleaning the top of the, uh, the griddle, and just yeah. getting that water on there that just helps release everything. It really makes a huge difference and so quick to clean yeah. the top of that griddle. Yeah, it's it the water. I mean, you know, there's no some people want to say, you know, put some chemical on it, you know, but that they're using principles from coming from a flat top, like a like a stainless flat top, you know, like at a teppanyaki place, which is way different. Uh, yeah, water, water is all you need. That steam, that that bowl and steam you know coming off it just brings everything right off um sometimes you might have something that's a little you know kind of caked on but you know if it's nice if it's a sugary thing just leave it on and it'll start crusting up on you and you can pretty much scrape it right off take your water 
And, you know, depending on what it is, you might have to, you know, invest in some paper towels. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and, um, and a nice scraper that you like. Um, I, I just use, it looks like a bench scraper. Uh, some people like different things, but, um, you know, that water and a paper towel. And then, um, I've been digging this other stuff for like, after I, after I, you know, water it after I, you know, rub it down really good, make sure all the junk's off of it. Um, get it dry, you know, make sure there's no other water and moisture on the top. And then this spray, it's like a, it's like a avocado olive oil spray. I've been using it a lot in my videos and just mist it over the top. And then I put the cover on it and it's, it's good for the next day. Sweet. Okay. Uh, another question folks are going to be, you know, asking is they think you just need a spatula to cook or maybe two, but I'm, I'm guessing you would have some suggestions on other tools or equipment that when you get into flat top cooking, maybe you don't get them all at once. You're not going to go out and yeah. buy all these things, but you know, as you build your, your tools that you want to have your equipment, you want to have for a flat top cooking, what are yeah. four or five that you would say, you know, at some point, these are, call them essential that you really yeah. want to have in the arsenal. What would they be? You know, uh, spatulas and, and, and spatula is not, a, you know, there's, there's different kinds of spatulas and, um, it's like with anything, you kind of want to get what you like. Um, I like a nice uh, flimsy. I, I like a more flimsy er spatula that's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of flex to it. I don't like a real rigid spatula. So spatulas, tongs, you know, that's one thing, and get you a nice you know scraper to scrape with. Um, I, this is. I, I feel like everybody needs a really nice instant read thermometer. Um, that way you're not overcooking your chicken. It's not, it don't taste like sawdust. You know, you can nail that temperature. You know, a lot of people it's like, oh, you don't need no thermometer. You just use your hand, you know, do the web thing. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can for a little bit, but you know, if, if you got a nice instant read thermometer, um, you know, you'll, you'll nail that temperature, you know, you know, right on, right on the money. And then that way you're, you're safe. Also, you, you know, you don't want to make anyone sick, but then you also don't want to overcook your proteins either. And, uh, you know, it tastes, tastes like junk, but, um, you know, instant read thermometer and a nice dome, a uh, nice dome works really well. It contains the food. If you're steaming some vegetables, you could close the hood if you want, uh, having a, having a, having a, um, a cover, a nice cover, steam cover helps create the convection and keeps it tighter. It's kind of like, you know, people say, well, how's an air fryer cook things faster than an oven? It's like, well, uh, basically an air fryer is a small convection oven and it's just at a, in a tighter space and it, and it, and it rotates a lot faster. So that's why it gets done faster. Um, so the principle, they just call it, you know, air fryer. Yeah, it sounds awesome, you know, but, uh, same principle there. You, you, it cooks a little bit faster. You can, you, know, you can steam your vegetables, potatoes, you know, it makes things cook a lot faster. Um, uh, you know, for smash burgers, you know, get a nice smasher that's comfortable for, for the person. Um, the Blackstone version I like actually the flat, it's a flat version. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, spatula tongs. I put those in the same categories. One's that's comfortable for you. Um, instant read thermometer an IR thermometer. If you're not, the, the one I use has an IR infrared that can measure temperature. Well, really I want I want to talk about that for a second because I yeah. I've not seen that before yeah. until I and I don't know that I've seen anybody else use one like that and yeah. I, I need to look for that. I'm I'm assuming you have a link for that in your description on your videos. I haven't looked yet. But do you? I do. I okay. Do, yeah. So that's a that's a ThermaWorks. Um, you know, you'll see Thermo pins everywhere on the barbecue circuits. You know, America's Test Kitchen. They always rate ThermaWorks thermo pins you know the best uh instant read thermometer on the market and and they are um and they make a, a thermo pin ir and that just adds uh instant read and infrared all in one item so that way you don't have to have two devices you know you see some people to have a gun and then they'll have an instant read and this right here just combines the two yeah. which i think is brilliant uh, because to your point, it, it eliminates, you know, a tool that you have to have out at your, your cooking yep. station, so to speak. Yep. So I love that. But it, but it also leads me to the other thing that I think is very important. And a lot of people getting into griddle cooking don't don't pay attention to or, or maybe just 
aren't aware that they need to be mindful of this. And that's talking about the infrared, the cooking zones and the different different temperatures you're going to use so that yeah. you can better manage what you're cooking as far as when it's on a high heat versus when it's on a medium or even, you know, a burner that's off just to kind of keep it warm. Yep. Yeah. That's using your zones to, uh, to your, to your advantage is huge. And, you know, depending on your griddle, uh, really dictates of, of how you use those zones. You know, there's 17 inch griddles, there's 22 inch griddles, there's 28s, there's 36s. And I always tell folks, especially getting into the griddle game, I, a lot of people ask, I see what, what do you recommend? Uh, you know, what's the best griddle? And, you know, I always tell folks, uh, get what you can afford, uh, both, uh, price wise and space wise, depending on, you know, how much space, space meaning like your deck or wherever you're going to put it. Right. Um, and then of course, budget wise. Uh, so, but, uh, I always recommend 36 if you can afford it both ways, space and budget. And that way, now, I don't care if you got two people, if it's you and your wife, you and your husband, whatever, uh, always recommend a 36. The, uh, you never see people say, man, I wish I had a you know, downsize. It's usually, you know, the other way around. Somebody wishes they would have gotten a bigger one. Um, and, and there's just so much flexibility. You know, like you said, you could have one, one zone off. To zone, zones dictated by you, right? Um, you can have it on idle. You can cycle the burners. I t I'm a very, very, I talk about this all the time, cycling your burners. Um, a lot of people say, well, my low hussy, this thing gets up to 400 degrees. And that's probably right. You know, you got three burn, four burners, could be three, depending on whatever you got. If you leave that on for a certain amount of time, there's no wind blowing or anything like that. Sure. It could get up there. Um, so cycling your burners, well, cycling your burners is cut, cut some burners off, you know, bring that temperature down. Uh, also very, very, I'm a big proponent of using water yet again to bring those temperatures down. Water will, water will change the temperature so much because all that heat is absorbed by the water, right? Um, so when you're cooking eggs, hussy, they are saying, hussy, man, my eggs, they're black. I was like, it's cause you smoke that oil, man. Or if it's butter, you know, butter has a very smoke, very low smoke point, uh, 350 degrees after 350 degrees, it'll start turning brown and start turning black. Uh, if you really, really get high. So using that IR, especially if you're not very good at seeing what you see, um, uh, and adjusting for it. Right. So take you a little bit of water. Put your water down where you're gonna put your eggs. Wipe it clean, and you and then and then see what your temperatures are. Then you'll be ready to go. So, um, cycling your burners, using your zones, um, you know, use a little bit of water if you need to to bring temperatures down. So, yeah, I think that tip with the water is a, a great tip because you're right; it, it cools that area down pretty quick. But that all that water also probably goes away pretty quick, or you can get it off the griddle pretty quick. So it's not a like it you, you're waiting for the burner to cool down. Right. Yeah. You, I mean, you're already, if you're at 400 degrees, right. You need it to around 325 for some, you know, some nice eggs. Yeah. You put the water on it. It starts dancing. I mean, it's, you know, it's, hit, it's hard, you know, and, and yeah, you just, you, you put your water on there, take you some paper towels, hit it with your scraper. And what's cool is whatever oil that you burnt, you know, you, you, you take it off, right. With the, sure. with the, with your paper towel or with your terry cloth or whatever. So very big. I'm, I'm really trying to show that on some, on some, on my videos, especially like an egg video. Um, just knowing your temperatures, knowing your oils, what you use, uh, when you could, when, you know, if they're smoked or whatever, you know, once you smoke them, it's not good. Um, just trying to get this learning process down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, for those who watch your show, uh, they, they would want, they'd be mad at me if I didn't ask this question. <laughs> how's the uh how's the feud with the andersons are they still a little nuisance on the side over there i mean they they a lot of interruptions by them you know not very yeah. considerate of what you have going on how's that how's that going with them as neighbors you know those those guys they uh they're never happy you know they're always <laughs> you know they're they want to mow their yard when when the when the on air goes on you know they see the lights come on over here. They they want to start mowing. They want to start uh, getting their chainsaws. You know that kind of thing. So, 
and uh you know you and they, they want to keep you on your toes all all the time so, yeah they're they're a bunch of they're a bunch of hacks you know <laughs> and the other question I got I got to ask Hussey is uh will we ever see Jacob in front of the camera? Man, I don't that's a good question. Uh you know, it's that's a it's a fun thing to to do. Uh you know we we uh you know always say, you know, folks um uh, you know, his lawyers have advised us to not have his his uh, face on there. <laughs> have fun with it, uh, but uh, I, I think it gives a almost like a tool time, uh, you know, kind of effect. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, yeah like Mr. Wilson. Yeah, you never never officially saw his face, and uh, I told. Do you get a lot of uh, a lot of viewers kind of in comments asking about seeing him? I, we do we do yeah that's that it was pretty cool uh this one guy he was like why don't we why don't you see his face why why aren't you showing i was like hey, his lawyers advise us not to and it's like you know he's kind of you know we kind of advised it a big deal he's like man you might want to find a different camera guy <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that is funny. yeah <laughs> yeah all right yeah, you got, between the anderson's and uh anderson's and jacob you know it's uh and uh you know it's, it's, it's kind of a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I love your comments on the Andersons all the time. Cause there's always, again, it gets back to me. You just being authentic. You're not trying to cut that out or anything. You just, you roll with it. And I think that's great. Yeah. You know, it makes you, makes you, yes, uh, yeah. makes it a lot of fun to watch you. Fridays, Fridays, it seems like everybody wants to dang do something around here. You know, I live in a neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, you know, mowing crews and that kind of thing. It's, so we've, we've been, we just roll with it. I get tired of, I used to, I used to get kind of, you know, I'm like, oh man, now I'm just like, yeah, let's just roll with it. Sometimes I'll go out there and feed them. I'm like, Hey, you want something? Depending on what I'm go. doing at the time. Yeah. Well, that, that'll get them to turn the mower off. Yeah. Oh yeah. I see these one guys, they always <laughs> hawking at me there. I, I keep looking out there because that's where they, that's where I'm at. I'm right here at my set and pretty much. And, and I see them, they, they looking over there and over there cutting the Anderson's yard, you know? I'm waiting to, uh, on video here. One of them yell, you know, what you cooking? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, my one neighbor, John, he's been on a time or two. And uh, uh, a lot of times he'll leave or whatever. He'll honk the horn. and be like, there goes John. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, but that's, I mean, right, that's, that, that's what I try, you know, it's, it's, it's a neighborhood thing, you know, so I try to resonate with just that guy. I mean, if some, some old boy is just cooking on his back deck, you know, hey, yeah, you know, I am yeah. neighborly, you know, so. And you, you cook with other methods, right? I mean, obviously you mentioned the big green egg and now you have the griddle, but I'm, I'm assuming you're a, a barbecue guy. You like it low and slow and, and maybe you have a, just a regular gas grill or something like that, a charcoal grill or something like that. So, yeah, I got, uh, I got, if my wife was, if you were talking with my wife, she would probably tell you I have way too much stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I got, got one of those too, uh, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> They're just, they're never happy, are they? They're, they're, they're like the Andersons, you know? They're never happy uh, till we uh, bring something off one of those, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She don't have to worry about cooking. Happy. That's the thing. Yeah. She, it's like, well, you don't have to worry about cooking. Yeah. yeah I uh, I love barbecue, too. I do I do a lot of barbecue. I'd say a lot. I don't do a whole lot. But, uh, yeah, I got, uh, don't have a, don't have a ch uh, charcoal, well, I guess you, a big green eggs charcoal grill, I guess. I got two of those um got an offset grill or offset smoker uh lone star grills uh down near down near you in texas um uh t -t -t i got a little kamado joe jr <clears throat> for like a travel a little thing and then uh pellet grill uh from from blackstone and i think that's about it and i got well, a 22, I, 22 inch can i tell you what i call the uh the uh pellet grill that, that type of cooking uh fake fake a uh, fake baker or something what is it no I, I i don't mind it i've never had one and my wife has encouraged me believe it or not all the cooking things i have out back that's something she's encouraged me to get because you know barbecuing here in, in houston in the summer uh you know i only have to put wood in unless i just need smoke because it gets hot yeah. enough um, know, right but no i call it the uh the backyard crock pot you just put it oh, in and forget yeah. it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it's <clears throat> i i'm a, I, I use it all the time uh because i just you know i don't want to 
I don't want to have to feed splits of wood and, you know, that kind of thing. So, or I just don't want to fire up a big green egg. It's, it's, it's really good just to go over there and just turn a thing on. You can get a little bit of smoke flavor from it, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely, it, it's a, it's an easy bake for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm, I, I, Hey, look, I, even in the kitchen, I like a crock pot. There, there's a place for all these different pieces of a cooking equipment. So I agree. Opposed I agree. To it, uh, so. Um, I got to ask you, you know, for me, I, I, I laugh at a few videos that I, I've seen. And I don't think I've seen one on your channel about this. Uh, what's the cooking season like for you where you're at? Because I laugh at a lot of videos that I'm seeing now where they're like getting close to, you know, not being able to cook out back. It's uh, going to turn to winter and, you know, got to put stuff away until the spring. And I'm in Houston. You know, we just last week got below 90. My backyard cooking season is about to take off. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're getting, this is prime weather right now for us, which is uh, fall. Right. And so right now it's not as hot as Houston here. It's where it's, uh, let's see, it's October 22nd. So we're, we're seventies here uh, right now. And that's, that's about average, but yeah, this is prime time right now. It makes you feel good. makes you want to get out and, and do something. Uh, th there's no season here. It's all the time. Okay. Uh, so it gets you cold. cook all winter. Yeah. 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 I don't, it, it gets it gets kind of cold here uh wind you know but uh no nah, we uh we we cook all the time i mean every every friday we shoot for for videos and uh it's rain sleet shine it don't matter hurricane we had a little tropical storm roll by we we're still we we're rolling yeah <laughs> just a little storm roll by <laughs> yeah yeah um let's let's get back to to the the flat top and let's talk about cooking on the flat top. I remember when I first got mine, my wife's comment was all you can cook on that thing is breakfast. That's all. And, and don't get me wrong. Breakfast is probably my favorite thing to cook on the flat top. I'm a big breakfast guy, but yeah. the creativity that you can do and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the most creative person, but watching you and others like you come up with some, awesome ideas to do things on the flat top i'm always impressed uh one of your recent ones i saw was the uh the flatbread cuban or i don't want to call it a sandwich a cuban pizza yeah <laughs> i mean it was flatbread it was awesome yeah that was that was a really good and what was cool is it was number one it was a, a flatbread pizza uh number one and number two you get to use you know leftover pulled pork you know from uh from a smoke from a smoke session, you know, prior. So it was kind of like, uh, it was, it was easy, but man, it was good. I remember, uh, yeah, there's, we, Jacob and I, when we're, when we're filming, it's like a lot of times we just, we'll take a bite, you know, I'll take a bite and you know, the next thing you know, we're, we're off, we're do done and we're going to something else. Yeah. And there's sometimes we, we eat stuff and we linger <laughs> more, we're like, man, that's good. You know, and it's like, we, we can't, we got to stop eating because we got, there's like three or four more videos that we got to do, but, um, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's not just for breakfast, you know, there's, um, even desserts, you know, you can do, um, you know, I do gravy. I don't do gravy on the top. I have done it on the top before, but, um, you know, you, if it's sausage gravy, you know, you can just have a pan next to that or a, or a half hotel pan, you know, things like that. At where you can cook the protein or whatever on the flat top and then just put it over in the pan and make it. Um, yeah, it's, they're so versatile. Uh, I like, I like to personally, uh, shallow fry, use it as a little bit of a shallow fry. So I intentionally pitch my Blackstone. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Um, I like yep. it to be pitched kind of forward to me or closer to me. So that way it kind of pulls up in that, that left corner, kind of over to the center and that way if i want to do like chicken fried steak or you know or a chicken sandwich you know, fried chicken sandwich you know and you can kind of do that you're gonna fry some pork chops or you know, yeah. whatever um you can do that and it's you know you're not it's not swimming in oil but there's enough there to where you can shallow fry some you know oh absolutely um and and just having fun you know we're talking about what you can cook you know trying to think that cooking things the right way, so to speak, maybe. Uh, but you can also, you know, call it go crazy, come up with some ideas, just try stuff. 
And one of the things I, I think about when I say that is uh, I saw you do on your channel. I think you got it from a, another channel, but I love that you did it was the, uh, the grilled cheese hot dog. Yeah. Yeah. Those were really good. Um, yeah. The, the guy, uh, chilies and smoke. He's kind of a, <clears throat> I don't think he's new, new, but uh, I think he's kind of new to YouTube and stuff. I think he's, he's getting on up there. He's making some really good content. Um, it, it got, it got, somebody had sent it to me like, hussy, you've got to do these. And, and once I saw him like, shoot, yeah. And, and plus, you know, I got to, you know, want to do it with like the North Carolina hot dogs, you know, the red hot dogs. Uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty good, pretty, pretty spectacular. And then the sky's the limit of what you want to do to them. You know, you can add jalapenos, you can add whatever, but the uh, thing of it is, is use a hot dog and a bun and uh and cheese and the, everything else is whatever you want to do so yeah absolutely um there, there's all kinds of dishes that you can cook on this you know I, I always like doing you know obviously the the ones that most people would just think about would be burgers or smash burgers i also think yeah. a slider night i've done a slider night where we'll have you know a group of people come over and and you can get you know here in our heb a grocery store here in the houston area you can get these different kind of sliders, uh, different flavor profiles and things like that. And you throw 50 of them on there and pull them off. And everybody's just kind of gobbling up bites like that. Yeah. Um, Philly cheesesteaks, things like that. Chicken fried rice. Are there a few things that you, you've you've said, OK, I'm, I'm going to try this on the flat top. And, and it's become a favorite for you or for your family that you go, OK, this just rocks. And it's in the rotation. We got to do this you know, once a month or once every couple of months for sure. Cause it's that good. Yeah, we do. We do Greek, Greek chicken uh, a lot. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, we marinate chicken. We, you know, I like some zucchini stuff like that and, um, get some tzatziki. I'll make some, some, um, uh, turmeric rice, you know, in the, in the house. I've made it on the Blackstone too, in a pan. Um, yeah, I mean, Greek chicken, that's great. You know, uh, you put it in a pita with a, with a salad. That's always, it's so good. Uh, the kids love it. My wife loves it. Uh, tacos are always a big hit here too. Um, we do my wife, they, uh, I never knew about this until I met my wife or wasn't my wife then, but they do these taco shells they call them shells but they're like a it's almost like a crepe it's like, kind of like a crepe batter but it's um it's cornstarch milk and uh some cornmeal and and you make you know, your it's like a, a a soft tortilla if you will um out of that and those are always just really good kids love that as well um and then you know your typical fare you know we, a lot of people think I cook just crazy stuff every single day and it's, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's kind of humorous and some people get a little, uh, get a little mean about it too, but, uh, it's all good. But yeah, I mean, pork chops, you know, just standard fare stuff is this, it's always on rotation. Uh, the Greek chicken's good. Uh, the, uh, I cooked, what did I cook the other day? And they were like, gosh, what is this? Um, Oh shoot. I marinated it in it's basically Greek yogurt, um, a little bit of uh, you know, other flavors. I kept it kind of mild, some paprika. Um almost like an Indian it, type of like butter chicken or something. Kind of, yeah. But it was um oh shoot, I can't remember. Uh anyway, they loved it. It was great. I can't yeah. remember what all I made a video. Uh it was chicken like like chicken shawarma, actually. But okay. uh, anyway, I left out the, you know, the the warmer stuff, no cayenne, things like that, because they, they don't really handle that stuff really well. Um, it was kind of a play on that, and, and they really dug that a lot. And uh, but yeah, stuff like that is, uh, is I mean, and, and you can get the, you can get the meal. You can get it on the table way faster than anything else. You just throw it there. there you you go. Go. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the, that's just the, the great thing. And when, when kids come along, the Blackstone, it's shine because I can get dinner on the table way faster than any other thing or item. Well, the other, the other thing I picked up from you that I would have never thought to have done that I do now 
is uh, some things that you wouldn't think to put on the flat top, which are like tater tots, French fries, um, biscuits, you know, Bill, Pillsbury biscuits, and you put the dome yeah. over them, and, and those things cook just fine. I would have never thought to put that type of food on there. But to your point of being able to cook it quickly and, and it comes out great, man, it really does. Yeah, and you, and you don't have to go in the house, you know, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, just to get the ingredients and stuff, but it's like, it's way better outside, you know, and if you're cooking bacon, you know, your house don't smell like bacon, you know, you, you leave is it that, outside. Is that a bad thing? Well, it's not a bad thing, but then whenever you go to church and you're like, you're like gosh, I, I, I think my hair stinks like bacon, you know, and <laughs> it's like everything just kind of kind of stinks on you but uh it's not a bad thing i'm pretty sure that's how i pick my wife up a little, bacon, <laughs> a little bacon here a little bacon there, and there you go. i got her I got her yeah it's cool that you can cook so many things you know and, and that's one of the reasons i always enjoy watching your channel i'll tell you one of the other things that i made for the first time i think you did a uh did you call it a cowboy hash is that what you uh, call it? cowboy stir fry cowboy stir fry that's what it was yeah uh, I, I took that and one night I was cooking some fish here uh, on the flat top and I said, man, and, and we were doing kind of this. I was making a a, uh, a topping for it with some bacon and some craw. I mean, uh, some uh, shrimp and crawfish. And I decided to uh, do a Cajun hash because we kind of had that Cajun uh, profile going. And I got to tell you, the folks we had over joining us for dinner were like, this is the best side dish I've ever had. And I'm yeah. like, First time making it, you know, I saw a uh, hussy do a little cowboy stir fry. I said, well, let's just do something with Cajun with some Andouille sausage and, and some stuff. And man, it was absolutely delicious. It's, it's crazy. I, I feel like you could just about put any dang thing on there. You're like, all right, give me this, give me that. And then, you know, I got some flack, um, on some things. They're like, hussy, I just don't know about this Italian dressing and, and the, in the Worcestershire sauce or I, you know, whatever I, you know, I call it something different. Uh, and it was like, I think I, I don't think I can do that, Hussey. I'm like, hey, hey, you do you, buddy, but I'm gonna tell you the crap was good. All right, yeah. it it was freaking awesome. And it's and, and I think people get too wrapped up in things sometimes. And it's like, oh, does cowboys use this? I'm like, look, I don't know, but I'm sure they have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're still and, cowboys. If they now. don't, if they don't, and I let them try it, they'd probably want to. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, it's just you know, there's haters everywhere. You know how it is. But yeah. It's like, Hey, you don't want to use it. Just admit it, you know, but I'm going to tell you right now it's great. All right. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just great. Stir fries are just so stinking awesome on that thing. And, you know, I mean, what can you go wrong with taters, cabbage, onions, peppers, yep. smoked sausage, ribeye. I mean, <sighs> maybe an egg on top. Yeah, I mean, if you want to make, yeah, sure. Just throw it Absolutely. on there. It doesn't matter. Just, just toss it all on there, and I think it'll just all be all right. You know, I just, I just, I just don't think you can do anything bad on them personally. Yeah, and you know, uh, I will say my my favorite meal to still cook on them. I, I love you know cooking everything on them, but breakfast is still my favorite. There's something about, especially this time of year, getting up early, having a cup of coffee out back, getting the griddle going. Knowing the, yeah. the the wife and kids may be waking up, and you're gonna, you're going to have breakfast pretty quick. To your point earlier, um, and then the versatility of breakfast on there. Whether you just want a classic with some hash browns and eggs, and yeah, bacon sausage, a little pancake, or you want to do a, a breakfast burrito, or maybe some breakfast quesadillas or something like that. Yeah. So, love breakfast. I tell you what, man, I I made a quesadilla the other day that was just, I mean, it'll make you do some sketchy stuff for another one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> It was, I think it was for my channel, but it was a, uh, it was a steak, steak and egg quesadilla. And that thing was just, it slapped hard. Uh, really? Yeah. I, I, I did it a little unconventional and I didn't use scrambled eggs. I used like over medium eggs and, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was top, it was top, top tier stuff. Uh, just, there was a lot going on. I decided to, I, I cooked the quesadilla just kind of unorthodox, I put cheese down first. So I had a cheese skirt, tortilla on that. I had already had the, the, the ribeye cooked up, chopped up, flipped the tortilla over, cheese stuck to it, obviously. I put more cheese down, <laughs> then 
then the the steak right and then i had the eggs kind of going over here at another place and uh bro it was a it was a flavor bomb man there was oh, a man. lot of textures a lot of textures going on you know you had the tortilla you had the cheese the, the fried cheese skirt then you had the melted cheese then you had the ribeye then you had that egg with that beautiful egg gravy and it was it was fantastic but yeah like you said that's the sky's the limit on on on, on breakfast um i just kind of took it up a little bit of notch on that one it was great yeah, something you just had me thinking about, you know, uh, a lot of times we like to have friends over. I'm a big pizza guy. I love to make, you know, homemade pizzas and we'll have yeah. friends over and, you know, I'll, I'll get the doughs and the sauce ready. And it's kind of a pizza bar. You know, everybody can kind of yeah. make their own, build their own. Now I'm, I'm sitting here as we're talking about quesadillas going, man, you can almost do call it like a taco bar or a uh, quesadilla bar where, man, you can get some fun toppings together and just yeah. have everybody on the flat top, just, hey, let's build some fun quesadillas, slice them up and everybody share. And then you come over and create yours. Let's see what we think. You know, and everybody kind of come up with their, their own, make it a fun time. B-Y-O-Q, build your own quesadilla. I, I like want it. it. That's, that yeah. sounds like a great phenomenon right there, Rob. Your own yeah. right there, brother. I like that. I like that. Yeah, man. Um, I do want to ask you or, or talk about, you know, you're on YouTube. You've been doing great here, but you recently announced, I saw it, that you're going to uh, start having, uh, I'll just let you talk about what you're doing. Another platform, another type of uh, hussy show is coming. And what is this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. So I'm going to go going to get into the podcasting scene. Um, I've been on a few podcasts. Graciously enough, pe people have invited me. Thank you, Rob. And uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy all the other folks out there just creating content too. But most of all, it's for that that love and and that love for cooking, love for eating. Obviously, look at I'm a big old boy. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to kind of branch out and to just get outside of that. Hey, I'm shooting a video for, you know, and it's a 10, 15 minute, 20 minute video, but really more get to get to know somebody, get to know who they are, what they do, you know, that kind of thing. So yes, yeah, uh, called chewing the, chewing the fat with the hungry hussy and chewing the fat is a, is a, I don't know if you guys have it down in, in, in Texas, it's kind of just a, a term, you know, that oh, said, yeah. Hey, let's, let's, let's talk, let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit, you know, let's chew the fat, son. And, uh, you know, you kind of stick around, you know, to, to me, it kind of gives me that old school, uh, you go get a chair, one of them fold out chairs and you sit there under that shade tree and just kind of chew the fat, you know, you just talk yeah. about life, you know? And, um, you know, I like to kind of go back to my, my Southern roots, Southern heritage, you know? And, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Got a few folks on the, on the hook to interview and so yeah that'll be that'll be coming up real soon i'm really really excited to yeah. okay so so talking a little bit more about kind of the vision for the show you just mentioned interview is it going to be mostly interviews is it going to be you know just some fun topics to talk what what, what do you how are you see in the direction or are you still working that out yeah it's, you know the the details are getting worked out ideally uh you know I've, I've i've been gracious enough to to be uh i know a few people in the creator space, you know, I kind of, and everybody does things a little differently. So, so that that's one, I mean, I even thought about like, uh, my brother, uh, big Mike, a lot of people, uh, love my brother. He's not on the show much. Uh, but, uh, when we're on live, especially on Christmas, uh, we, I live stream every Christmas and because we have a big breakfast, that's what we do for my family. And everybody's always like, Oh yeah, we're going to see big Mike. So, you know, that's been a, a thing i want to get him i want to interview him and and that right there kind of builds you know it's a little bit different he don't cook a whole lot but he uh he's probably the one person that knows me the most and you know, so like our family dynamic growing up you know that kind of thing just kind of brings in another layer of 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 me and, and that kind of thing and try to really build build on that but um i think anything Obviously, I want to bring it back to food, right? Yeah. Because I feel like I was talking with my buddy uh, last night. Matter of fact, he's like, we all come together most of the time because of food, you know, a lot of times. And that's that's how you really build 
relationships. I always feel like if you're on some kind of team, you break bread together. Anytime you break bread together, you you become a lot closer, you know. And so, um, so that's just what I want to do. I want to I want to just chew the fat with folks and uh, you know bridge those relationships. I, I agree with you 100%. I'll tell you, Hussey, I, I do this as well because of people, uh, getting to meet new people and, and getting to to have people over. You know, my wife will tell you that, uh, you know, wanting to have people come over and hang out on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, uh, you know, you can call and just invite them to come over and hang out. But you uh, you dangle the carrot of a little bit of food, you know, some, yeah. some uh, stuff's going to be on a plate that's going to be pretty good. Uh, most people will say, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we'll come over and hang out and eat a, eat a little bit of your cooking, Rob. So, yeah. I, you know, to me, it's all about the people. You know, I a lot of times will, uh, you know, I, I say I'll remember the food that we cooked that night. But more importantly, I'll remember the good time I had with those people that we were hanging out with. And that's the memories I want to have is with the folks that we hang out with. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it, 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 but it all revolves around that one piece, the table, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, and then that's whenever the conversations flow, the laughter, uh, you know, that kind of thing, the support, you know, it, it may be, it may not be good stuff, you know, maybe something somebody's, uh, going through some tough times, you know, but, uh, the table is what kind of brings everybody, uh, together. So, so here, here's back to the, to the, the podcast real quick. Uh, you know, I always say I'm food, wine, and whiskey and kind of my hashtag would be keep exploring. You know, always be have an open mind to food and to what you're trying and, and, you know, don't have a, you know, if you get a burger over here this way, it's got to be that way. You know, have an open mind to how people interpret making that dish, that type of food is the podcast. Just so folks know, it's not going to be just kind of griddle forward. This is going to be just about food in general, the world of food. It is. It's, uh, you know, some of my friends, they're not they're not griddle at all. You know, they they're barbecue. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be food, just food, food, fo- food forward. Right. Um, and, and I, I think once I get into it, there's going to be some, uh, some jokes, you know, so yeah. stupid, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it, we're all going to bring it back to food and it's not going to be just griddle. It's not going to be just barbecue. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just about the, the world of food basically, but yeah, I'm, I'm very adventurous. Uh, I like to experiment. Um, uh, I like, I like to do all kinds of different things. Uh, it might even be about hot sauce. You know, we have a hot sauce manufacturer here. Um, little people know Texas Pete isn't even made in Texas. You know, it's right out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is, uh, you know, 20 minutes up the road, which would be pretty cool to have somebody, you know, like that on, you know, so sure. Uh, cause I love hot sauce as well. I don't know if you do, but absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, of course you're in Texas. I don't know. That's a stupid question about me. Not at all. There's some people here that don't like heat, but I, I yeah, do. but yeah, uh, you know, maybe a restaurant, you know, maybe I interview somebody who's in a restaurant space, you know, um, it's, it's the sky's the limit. And, and again, it's just about food, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as we get ready to close out this episode, Hussey, uh, I want to let you talk about where people can find you. I know you have a website and I also want yep. you to mention that you know, you've created some great seasons that would be available on the website and then just talk about social media. Where can people find you if they want to follow you and see what you're doing? Yep. Uh, so, you know, all my socials, your TikToks, your Instagrams, Facebook, uh, the hungry hussy. Uh, you can find me. I have website, the hungry uh, where I have a lot of, uh, and everything ties back. Right. So i got my recipes, written recipes on my, on my website, uh, on my website. You can also find my seasonings. I have right now two seasonings. Uh, these are my own custom seasonings. They're not a co-pack, uh, or they're not, they're not a, uh, brand or what do you call oh, this brain fart? Uh, it's not somebody else's seasonings and I just put a label on it. These are my custom blend seasonings. Um, one is, it's kind of the, the big runner It's called, uh, heifer dust. And I re- originally formulated that for, for like smash burgers, steaks, you know, that kind of thing. But come to find out people like that. They use it like, like a season all basically. Um, so you got baked potatoes, salads, people are just like putting it on their popcorn. I'm getting all kinds of things. And, and it's been really a good running 
item. People really love it. And then I have a, it's called Fiesta dust. So one's heifer dust, one's Fiesta dust. The Fiesta dust is more of like a, like a Mexican you know, flair. It's got your cumins, your coriander. It's got a little warmth to it. It's not, no hot. There's no cayenne. There is some, there are some hotter, a little warmer chilies in there, but, uh, but nothing hot. We don't do a lot of real big hot here. Um, and so that's available as well. I have some, uh, meat temperature magnets. Uh, so you can have this reference right on your griddle or your smoker. It tells you the temps, what you need to pull off of, uh, temperature wise. And then also a griddle temperature magnet that's been very popular. So it kind of tells you about where your knobs need to be for eggs, for example, uh, and the, and the, the temperature at which your griddle needs to be at. So if you got an infrared thermometer, you can measure that and, and that'll be your range for eggs. Right. Um, so I have that got some merch as well, hats, t-shirts, you name it. So that's all on my website. And then, um, you know, YouTube is, is, is pretty much my biggest platform right now, uh, for videos and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, if you haven't went and watched your videos, you know, those listening, definitely worth the, the view. I mean, he does a great job if you're looking to learn to cook on a flat top or if you're just looking for some great ideas uh, of what you can cook on the flat top. And by the way, you'll be entertained as you learn and watch. Uh, great channel to go check out. I've been enjoying you for a while and uh, I'll continue to do so, Matt. You do a great job. I appreciate it, Rob. I'm glad we can finally uh, sync up and, and get this interview. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a struggle. I know. But no, I not at all. I appreciate you taking the time and coming on. And, and with that, we're going to wrap up the episode, Matt, so much. Uh, thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversation. I know the folks listening did as well. Um, want to say thank you to everybody for listening to this episode and until our next episode, enjoy your next pour. <laughs>